wasn't like sitting in a classroom at a desk being lectured at. Mm -hmm. It was working together with other people. It was creating art every day, which was a wonderful outlet. You don't get that a lot when you sit in, you know, AP Econ. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> um, you know, and so it was, it, and it was personal growth at the same time. You worked on something for yourself. So that was different, and it's something that is really underutilized in schools these days, at least I, I think it is. So that was, I don't know, it's, it's magic. So what are your favorite memories from choir? Several or one? I have one in particular, okay. which is actually one of my favorite memories of my entire life. Okay. And that would be my senior year, we were invited to Washington, D.C. They were unveiling the World War II Memorial, and they invited one high school from every state to represent you know, the memorial to a parade, mm -hmm. um, and Palatine got to go. It was really exciting. And uh, we sang at Mount Vernon, which was great. We had a really nice time. Everybody was really well behaved, went off without a hitch. And then the very last day, they scheduled for us to go to the World War II Memorial. Mm -hmm. It was very important that everybody remained quiet, respectful. So the way that it's you know, set up, it's set up in a circle, and there's almost natural risers built in. And we'd been told very strictly, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, you know, like be respectful, you know, look around. And it was very sad because it was the first time that a memorial had been introduced to the country for this war. So there were people who had fought in this war, their kids were there with them, it was very solemn. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Seaback pulls us all together and goes, come here, come here, come here, come here, puts us on these risers, and he's just like, okay, we're gonna sing uh, White Cliffs of Dover. It was this song that was from the 40s, and there were these people there who had been our age who fought in this war, and they're there with their kids and their grandkids, and we're singing this song, and everyone just came over, and they started crying, and like, we were crying, and it was really interesting because, I mean, you have to keep in mind, September 11th had just happened. Mm -hmm. So this was something that, at the time, everybody was very patriotic. And it was just, we had to stop because we weren't supposed to be doing this. Um, but it was just this moment that, you know, you could have this connection with people. And yeah, it just, it's something that's always gonna stay with me. Uh, favorite memories from choir, probably, would be the choir competition when we went all together just being on the bus and then actually winning the competition was kind of nice but it was just being with the friends in the group um my favorite memories are definitely from the trips that we took i went to london and i went to washington dc and it's really nice because you're not in Palatine for once and you're with a lot of cool people and with washington dc we took a 13-hour bus ride and that was really long and a lot of people would say that they would hate to be stuck on a bus for 13 hours, but everyone on the bus is someone that you're friends with, and it was really nice to just like sit there and talk with all of them and like play games and just like goof around. So yeah, it was fun. I guess one of the closest memories I could think of, like on the second, would be um, when uh, we won um, at uh, Chicago, Chicago Land Showcase uh, last year, and um, that feeling that we get right after we won, and it was like the best moment ever just to feel like all that work paid off like just to have like an award saying that we their our work meant something it's fun to look back on because i don't have anything like choir right now um in college and it's it's fun to have those experiences where you get to go new places with your friends and have like just performed concerts and stuff in places you never thought you would have been. So like we went to Hawaii and we went to Tennessee and we sang in the Country Music Hall of Fame. That was cool. Monday, December twenty first at seven thirty a.m. and at nine thirty a.m. we've been invited to sing at the White House. Today at, uh, at 3:35, so school was already out, and uh, um, I 
I was kind of like crazy. I've learned a lot over these years about a about music, which is the whole point of choir, but then um, also about how to like present myself as a respectable person. I think when I first started out, I was very weirded out by like the rules that we had. Like we couldn't dye our hair, we weren't allowed to wear piercings on our face. Like why was that a thing? And I feel like now I kind of get it. Like we want to be a uniform group and we want to look respectable. And I mean, like when we go to contest, we when we're walking from place to place. We all have to, all the girls have to stand like John with one of the guys. So we all like walk looking like we're like ladies and gentlemen. Like that's just how we are. We are respectable people. And I feel really elegant and proud and just incredibly, um, incredible. <laughs> Explain why you're crying, Dory. Because, uh, choir means so much to me. Why does it mean so much yeah. to you? Oh man, now this is gonna make me cry again. Um, yeah, why does it mean just um just because it's changed me. It's like my consistency. It's my second home. So freshman year, senior year, how much has it changed you? Oh, it's changed me so much. I I remember walking in my uh, freshman year and um, being like this really really shy and quiet girl. Like even even. I consider myself quiet, um, I guess, and um, just because, like, people would, other people would say I'm, I was pretty outgoing, even my mom would say I was outgoing, but I wasn't super outgoing, I was never, I would never talk in class, hardly, um, I hardly knew anyone in my classes, so I didn't really want to talk to anyone, and um, it just made me, like, a really strong worker, I remember my work ethic my freshman year, and it was, like, minimum, I would never do anything, I would, I would never put myself out there and really like show everyone what I really have and um, I don't know it's just it's really changed me for a really good way. Oh choir really changed me a lot like going into freshman year I was really immature and I didn't understand adulthood and then Mr. Seaback was like stop it and then <laughs> I like changed for the better I think. Choir itself was a big part for for me because like I had a lot of one on one time with Mr. Sivak because um, in school I was like a very troublesome kid. I had a lot of issues and he kind of just helped me go through all of that. Um, you know, he tried to act. He I I remember referring to him at like my senior speech like he's the dad. It to everybody in, in choir and that's like choir's just like a big gigantic family that you know you can talk to each other and you know nobody it was like a non-judgmental area so and that was probably the most enjoyable and most safe environment to be in like in high school was with Mr. Seabeck and the whole choir group. Uh, choir has really changed me as a person because Coming into freshman year, I I was really shy and I didn't really like talking to people. And I know that like I I liked singing, but I would never sing in front of people. Like even in the car, like if the radio came on, like I would never sing, like even just like in a funny way because I was so shy about it. And then choir really changed me because now I'm not afraid to sing in the car, like in front of people. Well, sometimes I am, <laughs> especially in front of Seabeck. But I'm not afraid to just like I'm more confident with myself and the voice that I have. So. Here's hoping the weather won't keep one group of Chicago kids from celebrating a very special Christmas at the White House. Palatine, to be exact, the Palatine High School Choir has been chosen to perform at the White House's annual Christmas open house, and that's Monday, December 21st. 75 choir members are hoping the weather cooperates as they travel by bus today. Now, they left at the crack of dawn early this morning, but as we know, those roads may <laughs> not be very friendly. What made you join choir? Couldn't imagine not joining choir. <laughs> um, I just love to sing. And that's, I mean, it, it was as simple as that, and it was fun. And why would you not want to do that? Um, I think what made me join choir, the, um, I, I saw like how most of the 
choir group were all friends, like they were all friends together and I kind of wanted a group like that. So I decided to join a choir and, at that time and um, I was only in it for three years, I wish I was there for four. But it was enjoyable for me for the fact that people like were very in tune with each other. <laughs> Like, not even just vocally, but just like mentally. People were in tune with each other and people could catch up and like share things. Um, I have been thinking about joining choir for a long time. I love music and I love singing. Um, but I was a band kid. And so I was always thinking, like, oh, I don't have time for it because I can only be in band. But um, eventually, a lot of my friends were like, no, just be in choir too. Like, it's fine. You can do it. And so my junior year, I was like, you know what, fine, we're going to be in choir. And so I auditioned with CVAC, and, which was fun. The audition was fun, of all things. Um, and it was just fun to just joke around with him, and it was really casual and relaxed. Um, yeah. Would you say Mr. CVAC or any other choir kids have um, impacted you and how? Yes. And I think that goes back to the other question because I used to be really timid and shy and there's definitely friendships that I've made in that class that are very important to me and I hope to keep after high school and even after college. And Sebeck has been a really great person because he always pushes you to do your best. Like he never accepts anything less than your best. Like if you're at 99% he always pushes you to do 100 because he knows that uh, you have potential and that you can do really well. Um, well... CVAC um, has really affected me because of his work ethic. Like he just, he puts like 110% into everything. And um, that's really made me like want to put 110% in everything I do. I, I would never, if, I almost didn't even graduate my, my uh, when I was in junior high, like it, if it wasn't for like the children program, like really make you go ahead and even if you're like failing all your classes. Um, and I remember, like, they, I, I almost didn't even graduate junior high, and I just never turned in any work. I had all Fs, I had all Ds, I, I had all, like, missing assignments. I never did anything. It was horrible. And I remember if you had told me then that um, I'd be, like, an, an honor roll, and that um, I'd be a National Honor Society, mm -hmm. and I'd be a um, Midnight, Midnight Blues. Um, definitely Mr. Seebeck had a big impact on me by teaching me just like musicality stuff which I can take anywhere and then also how to work with other people mm -hmm. in choir and then for students uh, I mean I guess it just taught me basically the same thing just and friendship as well you know Mr. Seebeck has just affected me because just some of the little things he says, he really has opened my eyes to like the future and like, how to live your life um, in a very like deep sense. I feel like choir has over the years made me a little bit more confident. I mean like that's a, you know, a personal journey as well, like through my four years of high school, but having that baseline for myself, like where I could always return and where I could always be in those four years made me feel a lot more confident in who I was. Um, you know, like I feel like if you've got that one stable thing in your life, you're a lot like more uh, willing to progress. So I had that one stable thing, especially when things weren't so stable at home. Um, having that one thing was really important. And um, so from there I became more confident from that. And uh, I mean, you can see a difference in me. I, when I was, when I first started um, choir, I couldn't project. When I came on stage, I shook just like I had to just shake um, like a leaf. And then on top of that, I would stand like pole still. Like, I would just stand completely still. And now I, you know, I'm actually really into the music. I, um, I just I enjoy every minute of it now. So, I mean, I just get on stage and I don't feel any sort of. I feel comfortable there with my teammates next to me. I just feel comfortable there. Definitely. Um, Mr. Seabag taught me a lot about musicality and um, 
proper singing technique, but also just to never take anything too seriously. Because as as scary as he is sometimes when he's having those days where he's like, no, you need to get this right, we're gonna sing it eight times in a row, and if you don't get it right all of those times, we're gonna do it again. Um, it, it, it works better when you just relax and don't think about it, and that can be applied everywhere. Just chill out. It's music, it's fun. part of having the class it was um, it was probably my one class that I would actually have laughed in and, and had fun in um, and I actually enjoyed uh, doing like the practices the rehearsals and stuff like that that was that was really great um it's just such a nice part of my day to like sit down and like work on something that i'm passionate about and work with others that are passionate with what i'm doing because i don't think you get that a lot during the day so it'll be like so sometimes i just i feel like i like sit down and i just think to myself i can't believe that for a period in my day every day i just get to sing like i just get to put my emotion into a song i feel like we work really hard to sound good on songs and so we put all of our heart into the, the music we make and being able to do something like that for a whole period is incredible it's just it's inspiring like just having one period where we act like a group and a team and it's not outside of school it's like in school that we get to do this which never happens like people have to join sports teams outside of school but this we get to do in our day-to-day -day basis and just enjoy it every second of it so i think just seeing people because it's like a nice little community that you have in high school and i like seeing my friends every day and it's a really nice environment because what stays in the choir room oh wait but said in the choir room stays in the choir room and it's nice because we can just joke around with each other and we all know each other um just the consistency of like doing the Working on something every day, making it better, like every single time you do it, mm -hmm. that really is like something I can't even like imagine um, doing. I can just, you just do it every day, you come to the Zach same class, Zach same people, uh, with Zach same teacher, and you just, it's sure like in your class schedule you see the Zach same teachers every day. But um, but to have like, to work on something to like an extent, to making it better, and, keep doing it over and over again until it gets better and then um, having just having a, a teacher there who is always supports you it's like highlight your day. Uh, being able to go somewhere and not have to think about the rest of your day you can just kind of focus on who you're with and what you're doing at the time I don't have to worry about school or nothing outside of school either. Going there second period sitting down just doing music not really having to think about things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's fun to be with your friends and relax and make music.
But I remember the first time I went into the choir room with CBAC, and it was um, junior high, seventh grade, and it was like during the choral exchange. And um, at the time, I was living in between. I was living right on the borderline of Fremd and Palatine. So my parents said, "Oh, if you're all your friends are going to go to Fremd, like we can put you in Fremd. You were so close that it'd be we could drive you." And um, I remember going to the Palatine High School and um, seeing CMAC and I remember all the exercises we did, like the breathing exercises, like breathing through our diaphragm, and I remember all the fun like warm-ups, like um, the Yaho like one, the one where you be like, do Yaho, <laughs> like the, those, those are like, the way. <laughs> and I remember how much fun it was and how, he, how excited he was to sing, and I remember listening to the guys um, during rehearsal, and I was like, wow, like, this is what it is, and then I remember him telling about all the trips that we went on, all the photos in the choir room, and I was like, this is where I want to go. This is the place I want to be. Do you have any advice for current choir kids? Don't ever strive for mediocre. Don't ever strive for mediocre, because then you feel like... <laughs> Like you, like you look back on it and then you're like, oh, I could have done so much better. But then, like once you strive for that top notch, that top score, that A plus, you feel so much better because you put so much effort into it. So always put effort. Don't strive for mediocre. Even though Sivek isn't staying with us, I think that it's important to help the new director and not slack off and keep up the standards of our choir program because it's really a great program in our district and it's well known and even though CVEC's not going to be there anymore that doesn't mean that we still can't be great. Just stay in the choir program. He's got to come back. He has to. He has to. He's got to visit and I need a breather. <laughs> okay, okay, just take your time. The, the choir program will completely suck. <laughs> it, uh, there's got, there's no way it's gonna drop. There's no way it's gonna be, it's gonna be as bad. We've already built up the choir program to what it is, and they're obviously gonna pick out someone who is more than qualified, and if not equally qualified, to take care of the choir. And whether or not it's gonna be the same, I don't know. But you gotta stick it out. You gotta have some consistency. You have to do pride in your work. Well, don't fall asleep in class. Turn your phone off when you enter the room. <laughs> um, but just enjoy the time and savor the moments you have. A piece of advice um, for the, the juniors and the sophomores and the freshmen and the incoming freshmen, all those people who will not have CVAC next year. Um, don't be discouraged by the fact that you're not going to have him. Uh, I know that he is somebody who is really important to our group, and we all are really grateful for what he's done for the group, but you all know what we can accomplish. As a group, we are fabulous, and we are put together, and we know what we're doing, and you need to keep giving 110% all of the time in order to keep up those standards. It's not about the choir director, it really isn't. It's about the amount of effort we all put in and the amount of teamwork we all have and the love we put into the music we make. So keep doing that. Stay in choir. It's, it's a unique experience and a lot of times, um, like if you have the opportunity, if you go to college and if you have that opportunity, it's definitely a good one. Um, I'm not in a choir right now, and I wish I was. I went to a choir concert like two weeks ago, and it was just all of these memories came flooding back, and it was really fun just to hear people sing, and I was thinking, oh man, I wish I could do that still. So if you don't think you can do that, because it is hard, enjoy it now, and if you can, try. <laughs> Take every day and just love it for what it is. You know, it, it goes by so slow, but it goes by so fast. And just never let it not be fun. And as soon as it's, if, if for any reason it stops being fun, tell whoever the teacher is and let him know or let her know. And you know, just, just let it be fun. Let it be that one moment of your day that is better than all the other ones.